Spider-Man No Way Home is the latest installment to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm going to review it today. I haven't reviewed any movies in a while, but I think that this one is certainly worthwhile. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. And yes, I am rather late. I did actually watch it on December 17th, and I also just watched it again recently, but might as well get it in before the end of the year. So let's go into it, you know, quick spoiler-filled thoughts, all right? So, uh, spoiler warning. Everybody loves this movie, all right? And trust me, I loved it too, but surprisingly, after my first viewing of the movie, actually, I was I was a little underwhelmed. I think that my expectations were possibly set a little too high, and what exactly bothered me, I think I just, I just overthought the film, okay? It was just like those little plot details that really, that really bothered me, or rather the plot holes, because there are so many technicalities that go into this plot that don't work. I mean, for example, Electro never knew Spider-Man's identity, so how did Electro get to that universe, you know? Uh, things like that. And also, like, there, there were a lot of technicalities that went into Doctor Strange's first spell, and then even more that went into the spell that he casted at the end, in terms of people forgetting Peter Parker. There are so many things that go into that, that just, you know, if you want to overthink a lot of the plot, it starts to make less and less sense, especially how it even works. Uh, you cure the villains and then send them back to where they were, all the technicalities that comes with that. I'm not going to go too into that. That could make this a 10-minute video, but uh, yeah, it's not a perfect plot, not nearly. And also something else that really bothered me was just, I felt like the fan service was maybe a bit too excessive, all right? It it was Sony getting a little excited to use Marvel's big budget and bring back the whole cast and then taking that opportunity to make a bunch of memes that they found on Reddit. You you have a lot of forced-in jokes, such as uh, Tobey Maguire's back going out and Norman Osborn saying, I'm something of a scientist myself, you know, stuff like that. And I found a lot of the movie to end up just becoming more of an SNL sketch. It's kind of, kind of underwhelming in a few ways. But, and also, 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 none of the surprises really hit thanks to the freaking uh, fan base. You know, spoilers just everywhere through the leaks. There were so many leaks that really, unfortunately, ruined a lot of the big surprises that this film had. And, you know, it, it would have been completely different for me otherwise, but, <laughs> oh well, that, that happens, right? But uh, that was after my first viewing, and I figured, I even figured after my first viewing that a second viewing would make me appreciate it more, and I was absolutely correct. Second viewing made me appreciate all the good stuff a little more, and try to ignore all the bad stuff as well. <laughs> so, I mean, there is really so much great in this movie, all right? The visuals, I'm, I'm impressed how much the uh, VFX team got after being so rushed. Like, they still did a pretty good job. There are definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely also not perfect, but, you know, I'd say the visuals, for the most part, are pretty solid, especially when you have Doctor Strange scenes in the mirror dimension. That always guarantees some really cool visuals, right? Also, just, I think the continuation of Tom Holland's Spider-Man arc, you know, all fine and good. I think it was a little, a little overdramatic, him, like, just that, like, evil look on his face when he wanted to kill Green Goblin. I, I cringed maybe a little bit at that. And then that was also followed by another stupid plot point where Tobey Maguire gets stabbed, and that has no repercussion. Like, I don't know what the point of them even having him stabbed was, just to make another shocked reaction in the audience, I guess, even though that one didn't matter. Anyways, anyways, I was supposed to be focusing on the, uh, <laughs> the positive stuff here. Uh, also, it has a pretty good continuation of most of the villain's arcs. I mean, uh, Dr. Octopus, I don't think that he shines as much as, certainly not as much as he did in Spider-Man 2. He was more of a punching bag for a bunch of jokes in this movie, but nonetheless still offered a pretty solid performance. Willem Dafoe, I think, certainly stole the show as the best villain in this movie. I think that was nearly a guarantee with what they were working with, but yeah, that was all great to see. Electro, well, he doesn't really act like how his character was at all in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I think is mainly because Jamie Foxx was probably practically embarrassed of that pre- previous performance, mainly because of the script. Uh, you know, that that has a bit of a continuity error, but, I mean, he was, he's still, uh, is, I guess, nonetheless, a more satisfying Electro portrayal than Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, for sure. And then the other villains were sidelined very hard. Sandman and Lizard, yeah, they were pretty irrelevant, and nonetheless, they couldn't even get the actors for them, it seemed. They just inserted, like, previous clips from the older movies, so uh, that was certainly a little disappointing to me. But, you know, they still bring back plenty of other stuff, such as the theme songs, too, which I, I kind of wished was a little more prominent, the older themes being used in the movie, because they really only played, like, once. <laughs> but uh, that's that's fine. And nonetheless, yes, this is all very satisfying. And there's so much nostalgic factor that goes into seeing all of these old characters from all the old beloved Spider-Man movies all come together in one really impressive feat, you know? And it, it overall serves as quite the love letter to all fans of Spider-Man, all right? It's a great time to be a Spider-Man fan, as a lot of people who love this movie will say. Really shows a lot of deep understanding and love for all of that stuff. And it really makes for 
overall quite an enjoyable experience. You know, you got to love this movie for, for sure, for sure. I, I think people are a little overdramatic saying it's like one of the greatest films in general of all time. <laughs> I don't know about that. For what it is, yes, I really did enjoy this movie. Andrew Garfield was also really great. <laughs> Toby Maguire was, you know, he was Tobey Maguire, I guess. But Andrew Garfield, you could still tell just how much he loves being Spider-Man. And how it's almost rather sad that Sony barely gave him a chance because of their bad script writing. And, well, I think that's why their fans are pushing a pretty big movement right now to get more Andrew Garfield. And, yeah, I certainly would be down for that. And one last small little thing to mention. Yes, the consequences in this film were really nicely done. I mean, for one, I mean, how much more can Peter lose? From Aunt May dying to everybody in the entire world forgetting who he was. Yeah, that is some serious stuff for sure. And it is overall a rather emotional and kind of deep cutting story, which is really good to have. So there you have it. Those are my general thoughts on the movie Spider-Man No Way Home. I'd love to hear what you guys all thought down in the comments below and stay tuned for lots more videos coming real soon in 2022. Bye-bye.